The Kyle Busch saga seems to have a new update every other day, so I almost feel like this video is redundant, but it is kind of big, seeing how for the longest time now the rumor has been that Kyle Busch would end up in the Stuart Haas Racing number 41 Ford, due to the fact that Haas was going to sponsor it. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case right now, and it's a pretty good source that said it, Greg Zipidelli from SHR. He said, talking about Cole Custer coming back to the 41, right now, I believe that this is what our plan is right now. Yes, we're just looking and trying to sort out the 10 car at this particular time. So I will say that the rumors of Kyle Busch going to the 41 in a lot of ways were fueled by rumor, but at the same time, were fueled by Cole Custer just not doing very well. Well, Apparently, it wasn't bad enough for the family ties to be broken in SHR, as Cole Custer's father is a high-ranking member of SHR. So, Custer will probably be back for another year in the 41. Now, personally, I think this is the wrong call. Custer has shown multiple times now for years, no matter how good SHR is, that he was just not ready for the Cup Series. And keeping him in a position where he's basically set up to fail like he is right now is not a good move. But then you also have to talk about the possibility still up in the air. Right now, the number 10 car is that possibility. Now, we don't know what the deal is with Smithfield. They've sponsored less and less races in the last few years, so they may or may not come back. And I think what they're waiting for when it comes to a deal is knowing what the plan forward is. Is Eric Almirola coming back? If so, I think Smithfield would. But is Kyle Busch going to be on the team? I think that'd be an interesting question for them to ask because they're going to get more exposure with Kyle Busch. He's a more popular driver. He's a better driver. And he's a driver who might bring their team to a level that hasn't seen since Eric Almirola finished top five in points back in 2018. And to me, what it seems like, and this could just be me seeing it from a different perspective, but from what it seems like is that Eric Almirola's decision to retire has sort of been back and forth. But if they can't get Kyle Busch, I wouldn't be surprised if they retain Almirola. If they get Kyle Busch in the 10 car, well, then I think that you're not going to see Eric Almirola after this season because SHR will have his spot filled. There's been a lot of rumors about Chevy teams, and it adds to the question of if not SHR, then where does Kyle Busch go? Right now, I think the options, and especially good options, are diminishing at a rapid pace, and he needs to get it signed now. And the two Chevy teams that have been talked about are Colleague, and then there's a mystery Chevy team that many people are theorizing, including myself, to be Trackhouse. Now, with Colleague, it would probably be the next great step for that team. A step for them to go from a infrequent contender to a frequent contender. Kyle Busch has shown before that he can resurrect a bad team. Look at the 18 car back before he drove for him. Bobby Labonte's last couple years in that car were pathetic and a giant downward spiral. Well, after him, J.G. Yaley was even worse. Basically a non-existent guy unless he saw him crashing every week. Kyle Busch took a team that hadn't won in five years and got eight wins in the first year and many thought was going to win a championship with it. And since has helped build that team into a team that would win two NASCAR Cup Series championships. So I have to say that I don't think Kyle Busch fans have to worry too much, especially with how close everything is, if he does end up going to Colleague Trackhouse or to Stuart Haas Racing and kind of resurrecting that team with Kevin Harvick. But the Colleague one is interesting because it is a team that doesn't have a winning history, a winning culture built into the Cup Series yet. And Kyle Busch, like I said, could build that team up to be the next Chevy powerhouse that goes against someone like Trackhouse or Hendrick Motorsports, or maybe in the future, JRM. But the mystery Chevy team in a lot of people's eyes is Trackhouse, and that would be an interesting one too. Trackhouse currently has the Project 91 car, and while that's a car that's supposed to be part-time and just have international superstars, maybe just maybe that team gets repurposed into a third full-time team if they're willing to spend 20 million 
on a new charter. If not, well, then you have to think that maybe they'd make a third team and still have the Project 91 card. There's a lot of options here, but nothing really to be ground off of. At the moment, there's no reliable source on Kyle Busch's leanings towards anywhere because it seems like the JGR ones are done. And hey, I'm going to keep throwing this out there. Maybe that mystery Chevy team is Hendrick. I mean, I wouldn't blame Rick Hendrick for wanting him back and his development program back. I think that'd be a pretty good deal for Mr. H. And like I said, this all depends on Kyle Busch Motorsports. Whatever manufacturer and team is willing to accommodate Kyle Busch Motorsports, willing to have Kyle Busch there long term with that program so it can build up for his son is really going to be, I think, the big crux of the issue. I don't think it's money. That might have been the big underlying story for a while, but I think right now, on top of being competitive in his own career, Kyle Busch is thinking of his son, and that's an intangible that you're not going to see in negotiations from an outside point of view. Now, personally, I think that Kyle Busch still goes to Stuart Haas Racing. I think that the funding from Smithfield plus some extra from Haas would be a pretty good deal in getting Kyle Busch into that 10 car. And yeah, we've seen different drivers mentioned for it, especially Ryan Priest. But Ryan Priest doesn't bring the prestige. He doesn't bring the winning mentality from fans, the popularity from fans, and the development program that Ford really desperately needs that Kyle Busch would. Plus, KBM would be great in helping the Ford development line, as Ford has lost some pretty good drivers through the years because their development program just isn't at the same level that Toyota's definitely is, and especially Chevy. So with that being said, I think that this is a win either way for Stuart Haas Racing because you got the 41 car you will never have to worry about with Custer being there because his father works at the company, and then you have Kevin Harvick doing well. You won't have to worry about him till he retires. And then you have Chase Briscoe kind of being the franchise driver of the future. While he hasn't really performed too great in the first two years of his career, he's someone who I think will be there long term and loves working with Tony Stewart. So you don't have to worry about him. With the 10 car, you get Stewart happy because remember, he was the one who wanted SHR and Ford to go after Kyle Larson. They didn't, and everybody paid dearly when he went to Hendrick Motorsports. Stewart would not make that mistake again with one of the best talents that NASCAR has ever seen in Kyle Busch. It's a win for him, it's a win for Busch, a win for Busch's development program and his son, and I think that it makes the most sense still, even if it's not the 41, but instead is the 10. But now, I want to pass this on to you. With the 41 seemingly out of the picture, where do you think Kyle Busch ends up? Do you think it's a 10 like I think? Do you think it's Colleague, Trackhouse, or going somewhere crazy like Hendrick, or going back to JGR? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And to all my channel members, thank you so much for your great support. So until next time, have a good one.